I've loved completing games ever since I was a kid, but as much as I get a sense of fulfillment from 100%ing a game, there are a handful that I know I will never get around to completing, or once I was done completing it, I would never replay it ever again. Not because I don't love them, but because doing so would be a combination of impossible, irresponsible, exhausting, and quite honestly, once is enough. Number eight. This list overall is just gonna be weird and it's just more pontification than fact in my eyes. So this is just me rambling about games that I love and have a lot of respect for, but may not want to revisit. With that said, this entry is a weird one. This isn't really about one specific game, but more about a genre that I love to play and that I'm adamant that I'm never going to want to complete. There is a part of the internet full of absolute incredibly talented sickos who love to get owned playing extremely difficult platformers. Brutally hard games that honestly aren't the most fulfilling to complete beyond the ability to stand up at the end, battered and bruised, just to say, I f***ing did it. Games like I Wanna Be The Guy or 1001 Spikes, the AVGN games or even ROM hacks like Kaizo Mario 1, 2, and 3. Games that I love playing by myself with some friends on a stream because they're incredibly entertaining, but I will never in a million years want to actually drill down and complete these games. Now, to be clear, there are people out there who have completed and mastered these games to a T. And I myself have done a few, like Super Meat Boy. I want to stress that these games can be very fun to play, and they're very fun to get good at. But I know my limits. Bashing my head against a wall to overcome a challenge designed to infuriate me isn't something I'm super vested in doing anymore nowadays. I will always watch a video of someone who is a master doing something that is impossible to me. But at this point in my life, I've accepted that I'm not going to be completing any more games like this in the future. I know when to move on, and there are much better people out there who are more talented who could do this in their sleep. Shout outs to them. Number seven. Back when it first came out, I was honored and humbled to help promote, play, and complete not just Mario Maker 1, but Mario Maker 2 as well. Honestly, to this day, it's one of my biggest career highlights that I will always be grateful that I got to be a part of it. But the word complete when it comes to Mario Maker is weird, right? How do you complete a game where the users keep creating content as time goes on with no end in sight? It's like saying, I'm gonna complete YouTube when YouTube is forever a service that is uploading billions of minutes a day in video from its various users. Users. Back when Mario Maker 1 came out, I created a video that I sometimes do where I have to complete as much as I can of a game that makes sense, and therefore I set my own completion parameters because it doesn't make sense or it's a weird process to figure it all out. I don't do this often, but when I do, it's mostly a way for me to talk about a game that I love, that I'm passionate about, without setting myself up for self-inflicted torture and months of failure. But since that video, the Mario Maker community has exploded with lots of creators and careers being born overnight. Now, why am I talking about Mario Maker 1 today? Well, more recently, Nintendo, doing what Nintendo does, has announced they've been shutting down all the online functions for most 3DS and Wii U titles, including Mario Maker. If you wanted to upload a level, you'd have to have done it months ago. But that did not stop the Mario Maker community from coming together to do the impossible. Clear every single uploaded Mario Maker 1 level before the server shut off in early April, which is literally right around the corner. A group known as Team 0% has been working diligently to clear all Mario Maker Maker 1 levels before the server shut down. And as of just a day or so ago, it happened. Team 0% did the impossible. They took down every Mario Maker 1 level to be cleared before the servers were shut down. Now, I want to add a caveat to this story. Unfortunately, it turns out that the last stage that was beaten was beaten by a user that had a modded Wii U. So technically speaking, the level has been cleared, but it wasn't cleared legitimately. In my eyes, that still doesn't change the fact that the impossible has been done. So while I can safely say that yes, it would still be impossible for me or any one particular human being to complete Mario Maker 1 by themselves, Team 0% and the rest of the Mario Maker community has. And for that, I salute to all of you for this insane, wonderful feat with a great send off to Mario Maker 1. Number six. You know what ruled when I was a kid? Skateboarding. In fact, it still rules to this day. You know what game captured the awesomeness of skateboarding without really being a pro skateboarder? Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, a visually stunning remake of the first two games, was something that I was incredibly exciting about revisiting and completing again. But this game has in-game achievements and some online stuff makes the completion process way too big of a time sink. 
Now, earning the Platinum Trophy isn't terrible, though it is an extremely long process overall. If that was all there was to completing this collection, I'd have done it by now. But it's the in-game micro-achievements that pushed this game into uncompletable territory for me. Granted, it was uncompletable at the time. I don't know if it's been patched or fixed, but a lot of those micro in-game achievements were just bugged out, wouldn't work, or were just extremely tedious. Factor in earning cosmetics online and you've got a never-ending recipe for disaster. This is an incredible remake of two of the best games of all time that sadly I don't want to complete anytime soon. I was sort of hoping that this game would also bring a whole bunch of Tony Hawk remakes or remasters, which sadly has not been the case thus far. But at the very least, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 exists and the game feels amazing to play. Number five. Rhythm games are some of my favorites to master. There's something amazing about tuning in to the beat and becoming one with the sound, hitting the notes you need to break that high score. And then there are games that get interesting and weird with the rhythm mechanics. And those are the games that I really fall in love with, only to realize that completing a game like this is very difficult. Crypt of the Necrodancer manages to be both a kick-ass rhythm game and a fun dungeon crawler, and also holds the honor of being a game that I don't think I'll ever complete. It's incredibly fun and incredibly difficult. Crypt of the Necrodancer really does have everything you could ever want from a game like this. Banging music, a wonderful gameplay loop that makes the game feel incredibly unique. The art style is gorgeous, and the way the game rewards you for staying on the beat is a wonderful mechanic. But it's also the thing that prevents me from being able to complete it. The difficulty curve of Crypt of the Necrodancer is real, and I don't think it ramps up as smoothly as I would have hoped. There are a lot of achievements that the average player, probably like myself, would not have a fun time going through. I want to be clear, Crypt the Necrodancer is not a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. And I even enjoy the insane Zelda crossover, Cadence of Hyrule. But completing this game is a nightmare. Its difficulty pushes the experience over the top, and most of the time, not in a fun way. Number four. Let's be honest, my rating scale doesn't make sense to a lot of people who don't know the show or know my interests. I rarely give games a bad rating because I try my best to find the good in games. And when I do give it a bad rating, I'd like to make the video as extra entertaining as possible in some way. Maybe there's some extra jokes or a high concept skit to pull off. In the case of the WWE 2K series, I have been trying to find an angle to make a video about the entire series and how it's been a crushing disappointment that comes when you complete a game or games from this franchise. I love wrestling and I have loved this series over several years, but one of my biggest complaints is that I'll never complete these games because the publisher and the companies who make these games eventually make it impossible no matter how hard you try to complete them. Now, the 2K WWE games are very fun and full of nostalgia for me and millions of other wrestling fans. That's what makes it hurt all the more when you can't actually complete the games. See, the publishers have a history of halting support on this series relatively soon after its release. So unless you are on that grind from the moment that you get hands on the game and you keep playing it so you can earn all the online related trophies, you probably won't be able to ever complete any new entries to the series. It makes a certain amount of cold, cynical business sense to drop online support for any given WWE game after 12 to 24 months to get players to invest themselves into the next game, which absolutely sucks because there is a lot to talk about why I love this series despite all of its flaws. I truly do love these games, even if it is almost always impossible to complete them once you get around to playing them. So ultimately, in the end, you're gonna buy these games and you're gonna wanna rush to get the platinum and all the online related unlockables attached to it. If not, probably not best to buy these games on sale after they've been out for so long. That is if you don't wanna complete them, you just wanna play them. Number three. Pokemon is evergreen, the series that will always sell gangbusters even if the quality is, let's be honest, bad at times. But new Pokemon Snap was like a breath of fresh air. The long-awaited sequel to one of the most unique games ever made for the N64, new Pokemon Snap is one of the most beautiful-looking Pokemon games ever made and is a fun, great revitalization of a long-dormant series. I loved playing it, and for many months, I tried completing it. And it's a shame that I don't think I ever will. Now, the reason why is that Nintendo doesn't do trophies or gamer score, but they will slip in some in-game achievements every now and then. The requirements for completing new Pokemon Snap are truly bonkers. 
This is some of the most repetitive stuff I've seen in quite a while. To complete this game, you have to replay every single course countless times to do everything and to snap all the photos of the specific Pokemon and poses that you need. This is kind of standard fare for this series. Not that big of a deal, except there's a lot more levels and a lot more opportunities to do this this time around. And that's not the worst part. The worst part is, as you might be able to guess, the online component makes completion a true nightmare. See, you can post photos online in new Pokemon Snap. People can then like those photos, earning you sweet medals. There's an in-game achievement, ironically enough, called Influencer, which you get for earning 100,000 sweet medals. So that means to earn this in-game achievement, I'd have to game the system somehow or post the most majestic Photoshop that somehow goes viral in this game's ecosystem and gets thousands and thousands of likes and then do that multiple times. It's staggering to imagine and it would take forever. Maybe there's a way to exploit it nowadays, but as far as I know, you can't. As much as I think that this is one of the best new Pokemon experiences out there to play, there's no universe in which I can see myself fully invested in doing this. Number two. Final Fantasy is one of the most legendary franchises of all time, with good reason. I love these games, don't really need to explain that. From the old school pixel art games to the juggernaut that has become the Final Fantasy VII universe, every Final Fantasy game has something unique that it brings to the table. But even though I have poured over thousands of hours into Final Fantasy XIV online, and as much as I love this game, I don't think it's even remotely healthy to try and complete it. Now, to be clear, I'm not actually super sure this game can even be completed. It's an MMORPG and a wildly successful one, meaning that Square Enix has continued to support it and will likely continue to do so for the foreseeable future, considering that it's at its all-time popularity right now. I used to hate MMORPGs, but 14 changed my mind. I think this is an example of a company doing an MMO correctly after learning from their mistakes. And Square Enix has proven that the genre can continue to grow and evolve for years after the initial release. This is also one of the reasons I'll never want to complete this game. MMOs are known for their timed events and Final Fantasy XIV is no exception. I will say Square Enix has been pretty good about bringing back unique hunts and rewards, like the car from Final Fantasy XV as a mount and those side quests. But there's definitely stuff that's missable. Maintaining a completionist mindset for a game like this, a game that's designed to be endless, is kind of unhealthy. And personally, that's why I won't complete it. As much as I enjoy it, it just isn't in my best interest to try and reach the end of that particularly never-ending rainbow. Diablo 2, the dark epic fantasy from Blizzard Entertainment, is one of my favorite games of all time. I probably play through this game about once a year or so, either by myself or with a bunch of friends, usually when a ladder reset happens. My opinion, this game nails the hack and slash power fantasy, and the hunt for epic loot always feels satisfying. The original game inspired countless others and essentially perfected the genre. When the remake was announced, I was totally hyped, and I have played for dozens if not hundreds of hours since its release. I own it on every platform so I can play with any friend who has it. And if you're online, cross progression goes across the board. But I knew even when the remake was just a rumor that there was probably no way I'd get around to completing it like I did the original game. The trophies and achievements for Diablo 2 Resurrected are extremely daunting. Probably one of the most difficult trophies out there on the PlayStation. And the sad thing is, I have done this self-inflicted trophy multiple times in my life based on my obsession with this game. There are two trophies tied to reaching level 99, one for doing so just in general and one for doing it on a hardcore character. These achievements really only count for Xbox or PlayStation. But ultimately speaking, for those of you who don't really know, getting to level 99 is difficult because essentially level 99 is the equivalent of playing levels one through 98. So ultimately speaking, you're gonna be doing thousands and thousands and thousands of runs from the Chaos Sanctuaries, and you need a good group of friends to kind of help you get through it. In more recent weeks, Blizzard has also slowed down support for this game as well. It's not exactly on life support just yet, but it's doubtful the game will get any new content down the line. The remaster itself did add a couple of new rune words, terror zones, which are a great way to kind of change up the necessity to farm for experience on just one map or zone. Overall, this is one of those platinum trophies that in my opinion, probably feels satisfying to earn in the end. But ultimately speaking, if I'm gonna do it, it's all I'm gonna do for a very long time. I could get this platinum trophy, but I would need to dedicate my life to doing it until it was done. 
which I've done in the past. Just nowadays, I don't have as much time as I used to. Diablo 2 and the Resurrected Remake will always be one of my favorite games. And who knows, maybe I'll just passively try and complete it one day. But as of right now, I'm okay. I know this is a weird top 10, but hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it as always. Let me know some top 10s you guys want to see in the comments down below. Until next time, take it easy.